Well, how y'all doing tonight? It's your boy Bry. I'm out here in Illinois, and uh, I got a little wind today out near the Windy City. But uh, we're over here in Walmart. We're just kind of walking around and uh, getting a feel and the vibes for uh, how the situation is, people, after the uh, the big wind. Hey, you can see the grin on my face now. The big wind, let's say. The win where it says, Donald Trump is your president, people. And uh, we're making America great yet again. And uh, I'm just glad to be part of it. I'm glad to be part of it. I'm glad to be seeing a situation that says the gas prices are going to come down. And uh, one of the big ones, uh, when there's no tax on that overtime, let's go, people. This is your boy, Brian. I'm not afraid to sit there. And tell you we're looking forward to that one but uh, this 4b movement that's the one that's got me uh, tripping out <laughs> these women are straight up cutting their hair off and saying that they're gonna swear off of having any kind of sexual relations for for four years I guess presuming because of Donald Trump's in office for four years they're not gonna have any sex apparently but uh, at the end of the day I don't know if they got the memo they're not the target demographic, if you know what I'm saying. But, uh, you know, your boy Bry, he's an equal opportunity, uh, so to speak, uh, employer, if you will. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at a situation that says, you know, they want to cut their hair off and get all, act all kinds of crazy kind of fool. That's on them. But, uh, you know, we already knew that they had the derangement syndrome going long and strong and that they, uh, Let's just say they're they're challenged. You know what I mean? They're challenged to uh, deal with a lot of things. They're challenged to deal with different realities that the most the rest of us can obviously see. And uh, you know the situation is there ain't no sad tears on this side of the aisle, if you know what I mean. I mean no pun intended. But uh, we're looking forward to this next four years. We're looking forward to Vance coming right in afterwards. And putting about eight more years down on top of it and uh, we're trying to make this country so great I see people of all different colors all different backgrounds you got the Hispanic people you've got the uh, and shout out to the Hispanic people I mean what a what a great victory you guys helped pull through for uh, Donald Trump and shout out to all the uh, my, my uh, other brothers on the other aisle you know what I'm saying and uh, Shout out to all the people that say, let's uh, let's talk about the Asian people now. There's a lot of Asian people that, you know, everybody knows, you know, mathematically or school-wise, they're pretty smart. But you know where they're not, uh, they're not dumb either? It's who they vote for, people. The, the Asian community ain't playing no games. <laughs> they're not trying to vote in uh, the liberalism, and they're not, not definitely trying to vote in something that's going to cut their own pocket, you know. Is where all the money falls out of it if you know what I mean a good friend of mine told me he said it's harder to break 12 chopsticks instead of two if you know what I mean so let that one sink in and see if you can get something out of that but you know I'm seeing Asian folks I'm seeing men and women I'm seeing black folks of, uh, of, of all different generations and uh, people you wouldn't even expect they're they're out there and they're saying to themselves we're tired of this. We're tired of the last four years and we're tired of a situation where we can barely afford groceries or gas, or rent. Uh, they're just tired people. They fought the good fight and they're saying we're not going to sit there and play the game no more. And I'm excited to see the unity really that's coming about this. I mean you've still got the uh, left wing people that are out there and if that's how you lean, I mean that's up to you. But we're not trying to play that game where you can't afford nothing. We, that game's played out. And uh, when Donald Trump comes in, I'm going to tell you right now, he hasn't even in office yet. And he's got the leaders around the world already talking about peace. Uh, we're done having any kind of conflicts in the Middle East. He's talking about, uh, he's got over there, he's got the uh, Taliban and all them saying, uh, we definitely don't want round two of Donald Trump. So, they're saying that. You got Putin saying, let's let's link up, let's talk about this. And definitely Zelensky. Um he's definitely not getting no more money so he knows his uh 
his days of shopping on the American tax dollar are about coming to an end. And uh, you know what? The situation is we are so happy. At least I could tell you right now, I'm so happy right now. Hold on, I gotta get some of this Milo's tea. What kind do I want? I'm gonna go with this one here. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna go with the Milo's sweet tea. But uh, I can speak for myself and I can tell you, I, I am definitely excited to see the progress that's coming. And uh, the fact that we have took uh, possession of the wheel so to speak on the ship and we have turned it 180 degrees and said full steam ahead people Donald Trump isn't even in office yet and he's making uh, he's making things happen and people are starting to, uh, the stock markets going crazy and let me just say something I knew when Joe Biden took office I kind of knew what was gonna happen and I said, you know what, let me pull my money out of the uh, 401k and I'm going to put it in a money market so it can't lose no money. And uh, I'll tell you what, after four years, I really didn't, uh, on that particular investment, I really didn't make a lot of money, but I didn't lose no money. And that's a plus. So what I'm thinking now is I'm going to turn around and say, the situation is people, I need to put it back in the market. I need to put it in a, a, a scenario that says... I cannot miss this money train. I know Donald Trump's going to make this thing turn around to the point where, just like last time, the stock market record high. I think he had like 36 different records in the stock market, and they were all positive. But, uh, you know, your boy Bryce out here, he's, he's, he's having hard conversations, and he's talking uh, with different people, and we're saying to ourselves, what is it that you, uh, the red-blooded American, what do you like? about a Donald Trump presidency. The other thing that I'm starting to really appreciate is uh, I understand he's gonna have um, a situation where MS-13 and these other gang members that have crossed the border into our soil and think they can come run roughshod on us, you got another situation coming for you, people. And uh, your days are numbered and you will not be sitting here running across, messing with our females, and with our children, that is thing going to happen. And uh, you're going to be put, find yourself on the other side of the wall. Let's be honest. So I'm happy about that. I'm happy about getting rid of some of these uh, bad characters. And uh, making our, our uh, America safer again. We're going to make our country greater again. And we're going to make our country more prosperous again. And we're going to make our country a situation that says... We can afford a house now, people. If you if you haven't ever bought a house, you'll be able to afford one. You know, in this current climate, you're not going to go out there and just run out and buy a house. First-time homeowners. I mean, you're going to want to be able to, to purchase at home without being subsidized, okay? You want to be able to have a good economy where you can go out there and say, I earned it. I have pride in it. And, you know, you're not going to want to rent the rest of your life, so to speak. And I know people out there that are trying to sell houses. Uh, I'm not talking about the owners of the homes. I'm talking about realtors. And, you know, they've took a quite a shot to the pocket because, how do I put this? A $250,000 house is no longer $250,000 under Joe Biden. You're looking at upwards of four hundred grand, And then the interest rate on top of it. So, let's not kid ourselves, okay? I mean, look. This is a situation where it's a time in America, I'm going to call it what Donald Trump called it, our golden era in America. I'm very, very excited about the golden era, and I'm excited about a situation that says, we're going to make America great again, people. Don't lose hope and don't lose patience. It took four years to be drawn through a knothole backwards and sideways in order for a lot of people to understand, <laughs> we're not doing that no more, you know. If we're not doing that no more was a meme, it would be a picture of the last four years. But uh, I'm very proud of America. I'm very uh, enthusiastic. And, you know, as far as the immigration thing, you know, if you're coming from a different country, I don't know where these people get this idea that everybody hates immigrants. We want you to come. We want you to come legally, and we want you to come the right way. 
But what we're not going to do is accept the fact that you're just going to sneak across the border like a thief in the night and come into our pantry and steal our food, so to speak. But uh, this has nothing against different cultures and people of different areas. That's what America is all about is coming here. But we want you to come here legally. We want you to come here the right way. And we'll respect you that way. And you'll assimilate and be part of us. But what we're not going to do is allow you to run across the border rough shot and be illegal and sit there and think that you're going to tell us what we're going to do. So we're getting her done, people. We're happy. And uh, we're just proud of the fact that we now have a situation in America that we can be prosperous, you know, and we can help other people. And we can say to ourselves, we're not going to run down this path of lack and uh, insufficiency, so to speak. I mean, Joe Biden, his whole administration was like having your checkbook uh, bounce every other week, if you know what I mean, figuratively. But uh, we're out here making this money, people. We're on the road. We're getting the long limousine dollar. We're getting the overtime hours. And, I mean, what else can I say? You know, we're, we're just happy. We're proud. We've never felt better. And, you know, I really, your boy Bri really wanted Donald Trump to win in 2020, which I know he won. They just stole it from him. But we're not going to go there. <clears throat> what we're going to say is everything happens for a reason. And, uh, you know, at this time, it would have been a, situ a situation maybe where my guy was going home. You know what I mean? He was kind of relaxing and getting out of politics. But sometimes you have to take the bad with the good, so to speak. And the way I look at it is like this. The last four years when people would say, oh, man, it's so much money for gas. It's this, it's that, it's all these different things. I used to say, I'm praying it gets worse. And what I mean by that is, I want the full policies to be implemented when someone gets in office and they're doing things like a derelict. I want you to feel every inch of the pain that they're producing on you so that you're not confused by who did it. I mean, I heard Barack Obama get up there and he said, here about a week ago, he said, oh, all the policies under Trump and the, and the uh, economy, that was me. That was me. I did that. I did that. That's what you were enjoying and, uh, under Donald Trump. You were enjoying the residual effect of what I was doing in office. Well, if that's the case, let's go down that trail. Why was it when Donald Trump stood up there and said he's going to bring back manufacturing into this country? Um, I've been following politics for a long time. And, you know, I remember when Bill Clinton uh, sent most of the jobs from America, the manufacturing stuff. He sent them on down the trail to, uh, let's say, Mexico. Okay. And uh, he turned around and said that the other countries were going to be able to have our jobs, our, our, uh, our manufacturing and so forth. And I remember Obama specifically saying, what does Donald Trump think he's got, a magic wand? He's just going to bring these manufacturing jobs back? And uh, what he doesn't understand is that we all know that Obama never created anything. He never was a business person. He was just a community activist, right? And that's not to knock you if you're a community activist. It's just saying... When someone has the uh, the background of, say, a Donald Trump, let's just take Donald Trump out of it for a minute, if that helps you. Anybody that's got a business mind that has created something, has built a business, has built a legacy, so to speak, or has any kind of skills in the business world, they have more knowledge of the situation than somebody that's just a community activist, okay? So when Obama got up there and said, what does he think he has a magic wand? And then you turn around and guess what? A lot of the manufacturing came back, okay, under Donald Trump's presidency of the first term. A lot of the manufacturing came back. And I didn't hear Obama get up there and say, well, I was wrong. Hey, he, he did quite a good job. No, you just hear him after four or five years later, he said, well, that was really my economy. So he's trying to take credit for something that Donald Trump did, which was bring a lot of the manufacturing back. Because if you remember right, Obama got up there and said, you're just going to have to get used to it. Them jobs are gone. They're never coming back. And uh, I knew when he said that. It just, it just knew when he said that. I was like, it doesn't sound right. Those jobs aren't gone. Because, uh, I mean, you can say what you want, but we have a blended situation here in America where I think we have the better 
workers across the world. I mean, maybe I'm just biased to that, but at the end of the day, that's what I truly believe because we have a mixture of all kinds of different people in our community. Okay, we have we have a lot of talent, so to speak, from around the world. But uh, at the end of the day, we all know what Donald Trump's presidency brought the first time. It was an economy that was booming. You had uh, record uh, low unemployment. Okay, you didn't have people, um, if you wanted a job, you'd get one. And things were plentiful. Everybody had money in, money in pocket change running around being able to do things. So after four years of seeing what we just seen, you're about to see a second term of a victorious situation here in America. And uh, this is your boy, Bri. If you have any reservations on how I feel, I hope this video clears it up because, you know, I have not been quiet. I have not been silent during this entire time. I've stood up 10 toes deep and said what I believe, and I think everybody should do that because we have free speech in this country. And uh, even though they try to, to crush our dreams and our free speech, and censor you on these uh, platforms I have a feeling I have a feeling daddy Trump's gonna make sure that free speech is alive and well and uh, one of his better speeches that he had okay was one of his State of the Unions where he he was talking one time and he said when his under his first term and he said we will never be a socialist country and we will never give up our sovereign freedoms and if you don't know what the United States has for sovereign freedoms you could do your research but at the end of the day I'm not giving my freedoms up and even if it costs me where someone says well you said this or said that and I believe it's my free speech and you don't like what I'm saying well that's your problem because uh, I mean at the end of the day it's I don't care what you think I don't care what you think. I don't care if you like what I'm saying. Uh, you should be tough enough to say that you can handle hearing a conversation even if you don't agree with it. But uh, that's neither here nor there. We're in a situation now where, you know, I've almost got to wake up in the morning and put my hand in the car door and slam it in the hinge area just to take the smile down a notch or two because we're living in an area where Donald Trump's back as president and you know that's my boy. So, you can get mad or you can be happy. That's up to you. But uh, I'm riding with Trump, baby. And uh, if my boy Trump needs anything from me, I'm a patriot. I'm, a, I'm with him. But uh, this is your boy, Brian. Just wanted to give you a little outlook on the situation. My little talk after the election. And my little situation that says, we're going to make America great again, people. Let's go.